Hi guys, it's Debbie. We have reached the end of 2017 and as tradition, it is time to look back at some of the worst films released this year. Just like last year, the films I'll be speaking about today are pretty big releases. I know that if we all got together, we could find some of the worst B-movies ever made, but today I wanted to speak about some big releases which I really didn't like. Tomorrow I will upload my other video in which I speak of what I consider the best films of this year and in the description box down below, you can already find my video on the best series of 2017. Also in the description box, you will find my complete review of all the films I will quote today. The first film I would have preferred to not speak about is The Fate of the Furious, the eighth chapter in the Fast and Furious franchise. As if the car jumping from one skyscraper to the other in Furious 7 hadn't been enough, here we have a plot which appears to have been written by a 10 year old making up a spy action story for his afternoon playtime. The plot can be summed up like this. Charlize Theron is a mysterious person, she threatens Vin Diesel, which abandons all of his friends and abruptly goes rogue. There are many action sequences which involve every car in town driving on its own, nuclear submarines, the rock's biceps, and then Fast and Furious eventually does the Fast and Furious uh, friends are family touching moment and everyone is happy again. I used to love this franchise. I was always excited when it was time to watch a new Fast and Furious film. I accepted all the cringe, the exaggerated car races, the cheesy dialogues, I loved all of it. But with The Fate of the Furious, first of all, the lines were terrible. The characters just blurt out a couple of sentences for exposure or to point out what they are doing in that moment. There's not one instance of convincing delivery of emotional background to the lines. Point two, Dom's change in personality was a very interesting turning point in the saga, a very interesting element because of the importance he used to give to his friends, how he used to consider them family. But the creators of the film failed to develop this element with an interesting scenario, making us completely lose credibility in Dom's character and subsequently in all of the plot connected to him. The action scenes were conveyed in a very 80s spy film manner with all the cliches that like hackers randomly hitting on keyboards while forcibly explaining to the audience what they are doing and their work consisted of ridiculous things such as getting footage from an a piece of the reflection on a piece of metal captured by an ATM security camera. I'd already started to lose faith in it with the sixth chapter and then Furious 7, but with The Fate of the Furious I just gave up and I don't think I'll even be watching the future installments. The next film I'd like to speak about is Snatched, starring Amy Schumer as a self-centered woman which forces her nervous and anxious mother to join her on a trip to Ecuador, where logically everything humanly and inhumanly possible happens to them. Such an unexpected plot twist. The two women's journey is full of wonderful revelations and surprising touching mother-daughter moments and instances of pure a golden comedy. For example, I cracked up laughing when our main character was wiping her vagina clean in a public restroom and the door opened and the man she fancied saw her what she was doing. I, I just cracked up. So iconic. And then in another moment, the waiter gave her a, a drink and welcomed her to the hotel and she thought she had been served whale semen because he said, welcome. Get that? That that was the best. Nothing in this film saved it. Nothing. It was just painful to watch. The lines were terrible. The, the plot was ridiculous to put it in simple words. The two main characters were random screaming stereotypes. The character development was limited to Amy Schumer's egocentric character yelling at her mother and making her feel bad, and packing her dialogues with sex-related puns. I can find flaws within films like Deadpool, John Wick, or, or even Fate, The Fate of the Furious, but I still acknowledge that there is a certain audience which will find them awesome. Who exactly could find Snatch awesome? I personally have no clue. The next film I'd like to speak about today is Fifty Shades Darker, the disastrous second chapter in the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy. A mindless romance between a woman which loves to be bossed about and treated like a slave by her stinking rich fiancé with an incredibly bad god complex. This film, along with the others in the trilogy and the wannabe erotic novels they are based on all failed in their desperate attempt at creating a romantic story but more on the edgy sexualized side. The whole franchise is completely women oriented and is publicized as something very edgy, as something very pushed, very erotic. Kristen is supposed to enjoy hardcore BDSM but it ends up being this cringe-worthy mess with a couple of spanks, maybe one sex toy is used, and no it's not meant to tease us by not actually showing anything. It comes out around Valentine's Day advertising itself as something extreme in which everybody loses control and gives themselves away to their senses and then we end up having Anastasia giggling because her fiancé saw her in her underwear. If this is naughty, what is nymphomaniac? If this is cheeky nudity, 
in 2017, what was the cast of Trainspotting doing back in 1996? Leaving aside all this romantic aspect, all the aspect of sex, the, the creators of this abomination in general tried to patch together all the activities and tastes women apparently enjoy, but then realising there wasn't enough engaging material, they tried to add some action, such as randomly skipping from a regular scene to Christian pilot in a helicopter above a forest and then plummeting into it. Oh don't worry, he, he turns up a couple of hours later completely unscathed and ready for the next chapter in February 2018. The next film on this list is The Great War, directed by Zhang Yimou and starring Matt Damon and Pedro Pascal, which accidentally stumble across the Great Wall of China and learn that it was built to ward off uh, monstrous dinosaur lizard but bad CGI creatures which return on the count of the clock every 60 years and which can only be defeated by a magnet. This film has some pretty impressive shots of the Great Wall and the colour coordinated power range, I mean uh, soldiers, but there are so many flaws, so many plot holes, so many elements that make no sense, such a bad use of CGI for the monsters attacking, terrible terrible acting delivery by our main actors which also have a character development limited limited to A, the handsome westerner with a troubled past which arise to save the situation and steal all the women's hearts. B, the jolly Hispanic, which is included in the cast just to provide some comic relief. If this character had also been overweight, we would have reached peak stereotype. C, the beautiful exotic Asian princess, but which also proves to have a ferocious Mulan fighter side. We are now reaching the end of this list and I was planning on including John Wick Chapter 2 as the last film for today, but in the end I'm going for Rough Night, which I guess is a comedy and which stars Scarlett Johansson, Zoe Kravitz, Ilana Glazer, Gillian Bell, Kate McKinnon as your traditional group of 30 year old, full time job, successful in life, cocaine consuming, alcohol addicted friends getting together for the super high and naked bachelorette party. The Tower Girls plans slightly change when a stripper dies at the house during the celebrations and they have to try and cover everything up without interrupting the party obviously. This film was plain stupid. It tried to be edgy, it tried to get some dark humour in it, but it just patched together a bunch of scenes which might have made me laugh when I was 14 years old. For example, Gillian Bell portrayed the loud annoying friend which has to cram penis jokes into every sentence. Demi Moore and Ty Burrell are the sex crazy neighbours which managed to include posh spice Zoe Kravitz into their games. The only person that partially saved this film was Kate McKinnon because her character was just so funny and as she didn't have that much to do with the main plot at least we could draw a breath of fresh air when she told us about her Australian adventures. And that's all for this year's worst films. If you enjoyed this video remember to subscribe and tomorrow you will discover what are my favourite films of 2017. See you soon, bye!